Let's check the diagram you came up with with what I have on the bottom of this slide. The grid ends on an EZ component. As before, that will be a PEC at the end of the grid. So that is at I equals I max. Then the HY just to the left of this last EZ component is at I max minus one, since our grid starts on an EZ component. And the EZ component one half of a cell to the left of that is also I max minus one. Then since PML is equal to 10, we can label the indices of the field components on the left edge of the grid to be, let's see, this is a half a cell into the PML and this will be I max minus PML and this will be I max minus PML or minus 10. You can count them across if you like. The bottom part of this slide shows a cleaner diagram. So the diagram on the top part of this slide corresponds to the 1D code with the PML on the left. We can use the indices shown in this top diagram when we're defining the PML arrays and when we're updating the psi matrices. So this is for the arrays and for the psi matrix. Then we will use the indices shown in this bottom diagram when we add the psi values into the HY and EZ updates. Also we'll use this uh, when we call on the EZ or HY fields in the psi updates. We'll see that in a moment. Luckily, using this approach, a lot of the parameters in the conductivity grading that we used in the 1D PML can be reused in our two-dimensional grid. For example, let's make PML 10 cells thick, so this will be 10, it's in units of grid cells. And of course, technically we saw earlier that our PML is actually 10 and a half cells thick because of the exact number of field components we have the PML on. Also, we can store the order of the polynomial, which we can say m is equal to 3 for setting our sigma values. And we can have sigma max is equal to the same expression as before, 0.8 m plus 1 over eta naught delta, or delta x, we're just calling it delta here, mu r and epsilon r. So those can just be equal to 1. This is what we used earlier for the conductivity profiles in the one-dimensional PML. The conductivities in our two-dimensional PML have analogous profiles as for the one-dimensional code. Now we're just gonna be calling them, instead of sigma, let's call this sigma E PML, so that'll be I, and we're gonna call this one sigma H PML. We're making this distinct name change for the sigmas because, first of all, sigma E and sigma H only have values in the PML. So only have values in the PML. Whereas before, the sigma and sigma stars were physical values that could exist anywhere in the grid where there was a lossy material. And the second reason we're making this name change of the sigmas is that before the sigma stars were multiplied by mu naught over epsilon naught relative to the values of sigma, which don't have that. But here, because the exact same approach is used to derive the PML update equations, starting from Ampere's law or Faraday's law, the sigma h's do not have the extra mu over epsilon coefficient that the sigma star values had relative to the sigma values. So we're going to get rid of this as we implement it in our two-dimensional code. Otherwise, notice that the hy's are still offset by one half of a grid cell. So we have PML plus one instead of PML plus 1.5. Then as we define the sigma e PML array in our two-dimensional code, we can define the BE and the CE coefficients in the same loop. So up here, where we have a for loop, for I equal two to PML plus one, 
we can have our expression that we came up with for sigma e PML is equal to so forth. And we can also then right below it, we can define BE using the same approach. And when we call on sigma values, we can use the same I value and CE as well. So that will be an end. And when we define the sigma H PML values, we can define the BH and the CH arrays in the same I loop as for the sigma H PML. The last thing we need to do is update the size. We need to uh, implement this, these two equations. Spend a minute and write out how you would program these size and how you would implement them in the time stepping loop. Let's specifically consider the psi hyx update in more detail and how we would implement it here in the hy update equation.